All right, so the uh, second set of videos here for the Warhorse Project. Um, I got a mini blade out here, and then I've got a pile of the large four-inch blade Warhorses. Um, what I'm doing now is uh, I've already drilled and reamed the uh, pivot and the location hole for the jig. Uh, countersunk this one, and this one is just reamed out. Um, what I'm doing is cutting the fullers on both sides. I've got one finished, and this was the first piece to double check everything. Um, so the fuller is 50,000 steep on both sides. If I can get a good picture of that. There we go. And the whole point of this jig, dead nuts even. All the way across. Um, I did that through the location sections on the jig. Um, it does look a little strange if I don't. This is just straight from water jet and I built the jig straight from water jet so it looks like these fullers are off but once you straighten this point out because from water jet everything comes angled and a little oversized once i straighten it out it looks nice and even you can put them side by side so you can see them fairly big difference in how they look sorry it's not the best camera for this but Yeah, well, you get the idea. Uh, so once I grind them, they get nice and straight, but until then they look a little off, but work the way I wanted it to. So over to the mill, got my jig set up here. So just got done with those, pop these in. And I tried to make this jig as simple as possible. So I butt it up against this lip right here on the back, put my two bolt holes and bolts in and a little hard to do this single-handed but you get the idea get it not tight just loose tight get this one in there thread it all the way in and then what I'll do is I push it up against the outside and tighten her down and then tighten down this one and it's a line right in here. There's no gap. This is indicated off the topmost portion. And when you flip it over, over here, you get the exact opposite side, uh, actually minus the angle. And then when you grind it flat, it straightens out. So I'll run this through. And uh, I'm already zeroed out here. So I'm sitting at like 12 thousandths. I'm going to take it down 5 thou for a preliminary pass. Lock my quill. Get it lined up. Fire it up. And you get to take the journey with me for this one. You guys can't probably see it, but I have an indication line that I scribed right next to the detent hole, and I, grind, I take the mill all the way up to that line. It doesn't have to be more than a couple thousandths on either side because you can't see it, it's inside the frame. So that's done, let me blow that off. And that's the start of the fuller. Five thousandths pass, just barely feel it. And up to my little scribe line that I have right there next to the detent hole. So I've got a about 30 more of these to do. I'll get that done and I'll show you the next step. Probably be drilling detent holes out and then it'll be on to milling the bevels. And then I can send these bad boys out to heat treat and it'll be a couple weeks till I get them back but then I'll start on all the frames. All right, give me just a minute and I'll get it set up once I get all this done for milling the bevels. All right, so bear with me. I'm gonna do a little bit of rambling here. Um, something I'm picking up, seeing as how I do this full time and I gotta put food on the table. Um, like they say in the industry, time is money and especially knife making when you spend 10, 12 hours making a folder. Um, it's really helpful when you find ways to save time. Um, this is probably a dull moment for any kind of machinist, but uh, like I built this jig plate, that saves me a lot of time indicating where the blades go. I just bolt them down and they're good to go. Um, gives me good 
reasonable tolerance within a couple thousandths, and that's really all you need for a lot of this stuff. Um, one thing that I noticed today, um, I needed something to just coat these blades with so they would stop rusting because it's just M4, it doesn't really have any chromium in it, so they rust fairly easily until they get a patina on them. Um, and I needed a, I wanted a little bit cleaner finish inside this fuller area, so I used a four flute carbide end mill and I faced that out. Um, before I had been doing it dry, I just run through and uh, go through a couple of end mills doing this, and I got 34 of these blades or 35 of these blades that I need to do, and uh, just needed to put something on there. So I've been spraying it with WD-40, and you know what? I'm amazed at the fact how much more life I'm getting out of this. So not only did this save me probably two end mills, which are about 10 bucks a piece, but it also gave me a cleaner finish, and I don't have to change out the tools. I don't have to do any of that stuff. And uh, I'm almost, oh, I'm about four hours into using this end mill and it's still running good. I've got about 15 or 20 of these uh, done. So that's uh, about 40 of these at 50 thousandths. So we're moving quite a bit of material from all this. So just a good note for y'all if you're getting into knife making, time is money. Save time, try not to cut corners, just save time where you can and you make more money. Okay, so I'm on to uh, milling the bevels on these. Uh, just got the fullers done and the detent hole drilled real fast uh, just so that it was finished. Um, and I just did my first preliminary uh, mill on one of these little minis. Uh, turned out pretty good. I'm using a uh, titanium aluminum nitrate coated 5 8 carbide end mill. Um, I trammed the head, tilted it back about four and a half degrees, I think it was. Um, and that gave me a pretty decent indicator uh, up to the fuller and left me about 10-15 thousandths at the edge on both sides so that should give me enough to clean it up with a 220 grit belt and then grind the tip into this. Um, you can see the tip still needs to be ground but the edge is pretty well in there. Let's see if you can see this a little better. Um, so pretty even on my plunge, good angle I think I'll back it off maybe another five thousandths when I do the rest of them so it's a little I've got a little more room to belt sand it out in case I get any little bit of divots or anything like that but so far so good so first one's got milled uh, I probably got another eight or ten hours of uh, milling these bevels since I'm doing it manually real slow so uh, get that done and uh, we'll go from there <laughs> 